So don't panic, but the fuse box has fallen off the wall. So we've got our hooks to hang up our garland and we've got some handles to put on the door. We need to replace our indicator light because somebody whacked it with their wing mirror. We've got a solar thing that Joe wants to change. I don't really understand that. So it's now beyond my expertise and Joe needs to rewire some stuff. One off. We are now in series instead of parallel. Oh, wow. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, and we need to stick the roof back together again because that kept falling off when we were driving. I don't know how these things happen. Welcome back to another van build episode. We've got lots of things that need updating and repairing. This time we're gonna be changing our solar charge controller. We're swapping out the 100 volt version for the 150 volt version. And then we're gonna do a little bit of rewiring on the roof. We're gonna try and rewire the solar panels in a different configuration. So we've gone and spent another 200 pounds and got some more Victron equipment. So the whole reason we're doing this is because Eric in the comments has said that we've chosen the wrong MPPT. You will basically only get anything remotely resembling full use of your panels when the sun is fully out and almost none when it is cloudy. Flashback. It's only pulling in 40 watts of power. It is an overcast day. I strongly recommend that you change to a series connection and replace the MPPT 150 with an MPPT 15035. Best of luck to you two. Look forward to seeing your new videos. Thanks, Eric. Hope you're right. If not, you owe me like 300 pounds. Our next security upgrade might be small, but it's incredibly mighty. But we're gonna have to go somewhere a little bit more isolated to be able to try it out. It's 130 decibels, which I'm pretty sure is gonna burst my eardrums. So we are gonna try it out. We've come to the park. I think we might need some um, ear protection for this though. So we're gonna try these. These only take off like 15 decibels. So I don't think it's gonna help that much. Ready? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so that should scare off any sneaky, sneaky people trying to get into our van in the middle of the night. It's a little bit tight down there and I really can't be bothered to take out all the cupboards, take off all the bed slats. So instead I'm gonna try and squeeze my way in and take it out manually with the screwdriver. We've got some electrical tape just in case, but I've turned everything off at the switches. Everything is disconnected. The fuse for the solar panel is off. So we should have zero power. On. What are you doing? I think I found the reason why we don't get anything on our to-do list done. I just need to fix this. I don't know how it's happened because we haven't really gone over any big bumps. Christ. This is a big bump. But the fuse box has fallen off. So I'm going to quickly stick that back on and then we'll get back to the list. The paint was too smooth and shiny so the glue didn't really stick to it. I'm going to rough it up a little bit and then stick it back on. The new MPPT has come up on the Victron Connect app. Oh, what's the pairing code? So it needs me to do the firmware update. We've updated the firmware to 2.41. Enter your secret pin number, all the zeros. Very secret. Let's set our battery. We want to make sure we're on 24 volts, which it is. It wants me to enter a pin to confirm the voltage. We'll do that. Yes, understand. Understand? Yes, understand. We're going to set our settings to Andy from the off-grid garage settings. Disable the charger for now. Select the preset. Start with the smart lithium preset, then put it on to user defined. OK, so we're going to do our absorption at 28 volts. We're going to have our float at 27 volts. Let's enable it. We're going to do another update. So I just double check all the settings. We've got absorption at 28 volts, float at 27 volts. Right, let's flip it. The voltage is at 33. Is that good? 
that's just the panel voltage. We're gonna try running our solar panels in series because at the moment they're in parallel and see if that brings us any more solar power. If not, Eric, your 20 years of solar experience gave us some bad advice. I've undone the solar panels and I've lifted it up and held it up with this little flower pot. The old way it was set up is all the positives went into one single positive and same with all the negatives. But instead now we're gonna daisy chain them. So it'll be positive to negative to positive to negative three times. I've quickly put it back in parallel just so that we can get a fair comparison. We're pulling in just under 300 watts. So I'm gonna quickly change it to series and see if it's better or worse. We are now in series instead of parallel and we're at 100 volts. The moment is just tracking to find the most optimum power point. Oh wow. And it seems to have brought it all the way up to 500 watts. It's bringing in over 500 watts. So I'll give this one to you, Eric, you were right. I'm gonna cover up one of the solar panels with our curtain and you'll see what happens when you're in parallel compared to series. But at the moment we're at 320 watts. I've tried to shade one of the solar panels and we're now bringing in 215, 220. And then when I take this one off, we're bringing in 330. The other panels still work perfectly when you have one solar panel shaded. We're gonna copy young Eric from the comments. Don't think he's young if he's got 30 years experience. We're gonna try the same test now and shade one of the panels, except now it's in series. So with one of the panels shaded, we're at 356 watts. And then with all of the panels out, 415, 430. It's not too bad then. Either way, it was worth it because now we're getting about 200 watts more by putting them in series. Thanks, Eric. Good job, Eric. I went to shower and left you cleaning this and you've done a terrible job. It's supposed to be clean. I don't know where we're going to put it. We've got the hooks, so we just need to decide which wall we're going to stick it into. But I think these should be enough to hold it onto the wall. This is the first piece of decoration that Joe has actually approved of and not made me remove straight away, so I'm taking this one as a win. Got screws. We bought these handles for our drawers. We've deliberately bought ones that are sort of curved and flat towards the drawer so that hopefully we won't walk into it and when we're sort of getting in and out of bed we don't scrape ourselves down the side of it. Because at the minute we only have those locking buttons and when you've got like wet hands or you're trying to put things away it's really hard to try and pinch it and pull it out. So we're going to put real handles on. What's the beeping? That is my high voltage. The only thing I know about voltage is that song, Danger, Danger. That beep is the Serbo GX. I've told it to beep at 28 volts, and that means we're coming up to fully charged. Let's check if the MPPT has moved from bulk to absorption. See, it's gone from bulk to absorption. All right, Steve Jobs. Do you want to go back to the Genius Bar, or do you want to fit my handles now? What's half of 19 and a half? Let's see the others. Don't look in our cupboards, they're uh, messy. Quite a hunchback of Notre Dame you had there. Oh, I got bent down, I'm not. I got my flat. Apparently I'm drilling it, so they're gonna be wonky. How do I know where I'm supposed to go? The calculations we just did. Oh. I don't like it. <laughs> The screws are too long, so it's now beyond my expertise. Joe can fix it. That is the second time somebody has smashed our wing mirror, and both times we're in Wales. Don't think the Welsh like us. Go. Ah, this guy. <laughs> we're back on the drive, and as you can hear, the neighbour's washing his car as usual. I put some sellotape on it just to keep it waterproof. Oh, this has left a mess. Is it just rubber? Yeah. After we got hit by the Tesco delivery truck, our indicator would work on the left, but as soon as we went to the right, it would just click really fast and we'd get a warning on the dash. It's still doing it. It doesn't matter if there's a warning as long as it like indicates, so let me check. Nothing? If anyone knows how to fix this, please leave it in the comments. We've got that Stewie stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> it just wheezes himself. <laughs> We've noticed a problem with how we've wired this up. When we first started, we wired up our drinking water pump and our fresh water pump to the same switch. 
But what we found is when the fresh water, which is the tank underneath the van, when it runs out of water, the pump just keeps spinning and spinning. So we have to turn it off at the switch, but that means we have no drinking water. So we're gonna divide the two up and now I'm gonna have a fresh water and a drinking water switch. It's a little bit boring, but it's something we have to do. The water pump we know works because that's the original wire. Fresh water goes blue. Oh good, we did it. So now we've got separate buttons for each one. Well dinner's ready but we finished everything on our list and tomorrow we're setting off as far north as we can. So make sure you tune in and see where we go. See you next time.